I would first like to thank Adam Hare for suggesting this video topic in the comments on my previous video and with that, let's get back to today's video. That time I got reincarnated as a slime has quite possibly one of the strongest main characters I've ever seen in any isekai and his name is Rimuru Tempest. And just from looking at the anime right now, we can already see just how strong he has become. Of course, the majority of his strength comes from the skills that he managed to acquire throughout the series and everything about him seems to be set up in a way that will always lead to this overpowered state. That's why in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the skills that kickstarted his growth and see just how strong he actually is. As always, a spoiler warning for the video. Also, please don't forget to give the video a like and subscribing to the channel for more upcoming Tensura videos. <laughs> to start, we first need to understand two things, the general concept of what skills are in the Tensura universe and the type of creature Rimuru is. First of all, skills in the Tensura universe are like natural abilities that can be acquired through numerous ways like personal growth and evolution, being gifted the skill by the voice of the world, stealing it from others, sharing control of a specific skill or through the combining and evolution of certain skills. They are the abilities which are etched into a person or monster's very existence and can be used without any practice as if it's something that has been always part of them for their entire life. And in the Tensura universe, these skills are classified based on the evolutionary stage for a specific skill, going from common to extra to unique to ultimate, with each tier getting stronger and rarer as well. As you can probably guess, common is the most basic level of skills and extra being skills that are far more powerful and efficient than common skills. Moving up a level, we have the unique skill that as the name implies, are solely unique to the user and only one may exist at a time. They are usually composed of multiple common or extra skills which then serve as the basis to reach the final evolutionary stage of the skills, the ultimate skill. Anyone who had acquired an ultimate skill became powerful beings that can only be rivaled by other individuals with an ultimate skill as well. Well, it is also similar to unique skills and that it cannot be shared or copied and can only be owned by one single individual. Then there's also another specific classification known as intrinsic skills which are a separate type of skill different from the previous ones I mentioned. They are the skills that are specific to a certain race of physical or spiritual beings and can only be obtained through their own race. This aspect is actually pretty important because it helps to give us an idea of how strong Rimuru already is when he got reincarnated. Because as we all know he is a slime and that in the Tensura universe they are considered to be the weakest monsters known to exist but funny enough the intrinsic skills they possess and their physiology are actually what helped to set up Rimuru's future growth. As a slime it meant that he's a monster that relied on just magicules to survive, he didn't need any food, rest or even breathing. And the fact that slime bodies are simple organisms with identical cells, they can solely focus on one single task the body needs and that is to convert and absorb magicules. Slimes also had intrinsic skills like regeneration, a basic form of healing that allows him to restore or repair damaged body parts, absorb and dissolve which basically serve as the foundation for Rimuru's unique skill predator. With that, let's start taking a look at the main set of skills that are crucial in making Rimuru into such a powerful character which are the aforementioned unique skill predator and also the great sage. Now the first skill we'll be talking about is predator, one of the unique skills that Rimuru acquired upon his reincarnation. This skill has 5 different sub skills and the first of these sub skill is predation. It is the first effect to take place when predator is used and it allows him to absorb any target he wants which is then followed by another sub skill called analysis. Analysis would begin to fully study and analyze the target absorbed by predation and allows Rimuru to recreate it if he wishes to. Things like craftable items can be reproduced if the required materials are present and in the case of skills or magic, the same technique can also be acquired after successfully analyzing them. Then there's Tamak, it grants Rimuru the ability to store any material or item produced via analysis directly within his stomach for an indefinite period of time. And moving on, we have the sub-skill mimicry which works in conjunction with analysis and allows Rimuru to reproduce the forms and skills of the animal analyzed target. However, if there's ever any target that contains harmful or unnecessary elements inside it after they are absorbed, the effect of isolation, another sub-skill or predator would take place where that specific aspect of the target would be neutralized, broken down and stored as magical energy inside Rimuru's stomach. Now I'm sure you can already guess, these 5 main components that make up the unique skill predator presents Rimuru with the possibility of acquiring a crazy amount of new skills and makes his potential for growth that much greater. It's because of this that the skills he acquired can then be combined with other skills and those can then serve as the foundation for the development of more unique and ultimate skills in the future. This was actually what happened when his unique skill predator combined with the skill staff acquired from the Orc disaster to evolve into the unique skill gluttony. 
this new unique skill had effectively doubled the capacity of his stomach while adding three additional sub-skills into Predator's existing one. The three new sub-skills are Corrosion, Receive and Provide. Corrosion is a sub-skill that works towards decomposing a target in conjunction with Predation and allows Rimuru to have a chance of acquiring the target's ability after consuming only a part of the target's body. Meanwhile, Receive is the ability for Rimuru to claim any of his subordinate skills as his own while Provide on the other hand is the exact opposite of Receive and it allows him to give skills to others as long as they are capable of using it. So basically, Rimuru's own growth is now not just solely based on himself and is now directly proportional to the growth of his subordinates as well. However, just because he has the ability to acquire what seems like an infinite number of skills doesn't mean that he'll instantly be proficient at all of them and managing or knowing how to properly use all these skills isn't something he can do alone. That's why another strong factor in his strength is definitely thanks to the unique skill Great Sage. Initially started out just as the extra skill Sage, it immediately evolved into the unique skill Great Sage during Rimuru's reincarnation. After the evolution, the Great Sage appeared inside his mind and could now be used as his own personal carry machine but since the Great Sage was merely a form of conceptual intelligence that is devoid of any personality. It would always remain relatively passive and would only interact with Rumuru unless he was asked a question first, but on rare occasion it would also act proactively if it is something that concerns Rumuru himself. That said, I won't be going into too much detail regarding the Great Sage as I have already covered it in another video so I highly recommend watching that video if you are interested. Initially, the Great Sage only consisted of 6 sub-skills which are Thought Acceleration, Analytical Appraiser, Parallel Processing, Chant Annulment, All of Creation, and Auto Battle Mode. But thanks to Parallel Processing which allowed Rimuru to separate his own thought processes from any current thought processes, he decided to link this specific skill effect to the analysis effect from Predator to greatly increase the efficiency of his analytical capabilities. He then used this to pair with All of Creation, a skill that allowed him to gain additional detailed information and make sense of whatever he's observing or doing through the Great Sage. Because parallel processing and analysis allowed him to break down whatever he has absorbed immediately, all creation can then instantly relay all the new information acquired back to him. That's why in the anime, we always see that everything just seems to be so easy for Rimuru because having the Great Sage acting as the source for finding answers and Predator's analysis being the one that fills that source with additional knowledge, it's definitely no surprise that Rimuru can comprehend just about anything in the world without any issues. Now that we went over the two main unique skills that are most crucial in making Rimuru into who he is and how powerful he will eventually become, I would also like to go over some other skills or abilities that are more like supplements leading up to when he acquires his ultimate skills. So yeah, one of the most underrated skills he acquired was the extra skill Magic Sense. It allowed him to observe the interactions between magic hues and the matter around him so he can create a mental image of his surroundings, basically giving him a 360 view of everything and making it almost impossible to ever catch him off guard unless there is some sort of skills or phenomenon that distorted the magic hues in the area. Additionally, during his time inside the cave, he also acquired a variety of common and extra skills from monsters he absorbed. Like the Temper Serpent, he acquired a skill Poison Breath and sensed his source. Then he also acquired Paralysis Breath from the Centipede, the Body Armor skill from the Lizard, the Sticky and Steel Trap from the Big Spider, and then the Jump Bat which provided removal with Ultrasonic Waves. This was actually the most useful skill he had acquired because it allowed him to manipulate Ultrasonic Waves to produce sound and through some smart use of the skill, he was now able to communicate with others which low-key helped him a lot in the long run. Later, he would also acquire a new set of skills from the Dire Wolf Leader which resulted in him getting the skill Coercion, a form of intimidation that scales with the power of the user, Keen Smell basically giving the user an enhanced sense of smell and thought communication, allowing the user to create a space where multiple users can freely share information with a large group over a wider area. There's also Shadow Step which allowed the travel of long distances by making use of the Shadow Subspace and Black Lightning, a very destructive lightning ability. Now, it was actually during his encounter with Shizu that we will see Rimuru's strength grow exponentially because he would acquire a few overpowered skills that will serve as the foundation for his future growth. But before that, we have to first look at the skills he got from Ifrit which are Replication, Combustion and Range Barrier. Replication was a skill that allowed the user to create a clone of themselves out of magic. They have the same strength and skill as the user but they are far less durable and later the skill would be evolved into Enhanced Replication, a more durable version of the skill. Combustion is as the name implies, it allows the user to combust into flames. Then Range Barrier just allowed the creation of barriers and Rimuru actually used this in conjunction with Combustion to manipulate the flames he created. 
Now regarding the skills Rimuru acquired from Shizu, the unique skill Degenerate was the most important one because of its two sub-skills. The first one was Synthesis, which is the ability to combine multiple targets into a single object. He was now able to mix and match any number of skills while having the Great Sage to oversee it, so he literally could gain an infinite amount of new skills. The second one is Separation, which releases the inherent properties of a single target into separate objects, meaning he could just pick up properties of a skill he desired and toss away the leftover ones without even losing the skill itself. A good example of the use of this skill initially was when Rimuru used it with the sub-skill mimicry from Predator, Combustion from Ifrit, and Fire Manipulation from Sizu, which resulted in the creation of the extra skill Black Flame and Molecular Manipulation. Another time was during the fight against Charybdis when Rimuru had used Separate to break down the core of Charybdis that in turn resulted in the acquisition of the extra skill Magic Jamming and Gravity Manipulation. He later used Degenerate again to combine Magic Jamming, Gravity and Molecular Manipulation to create a new skill Magic Manipulation. This made it possible for him to directly interfere with someone else's use of magic and increase his own proficiency in controlling magic use. That's why we see Rimuru being able to basically change the very property of the natural world and this is why Degenerate is such an important skill for him to acquire. Because honestly, with Great Sage at his side, the possibilities are endless and later we'll see more use of the skill and how it feeds into his eventual ascension into a demon lord. Rimuru is already looking quite overpowered right now and we haven't even started to talk about the lead up to his awakening as a true demon lord, but we'll save that topic for next time as to not bombard everyone with too much information. I hope you enjoyed the video and I would love to hear your thoughts on how powerful Rimuru actually is and whether or not you agree with me. Also, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell to know when part 2 will come out. So yeah, as always, thanks for watching and stay safe everyone.